Hi, this is a video on kinematics with constant acceleration from chapter 8. Pause for a moment and read the question. So uh, we can see that uh, some key words in this is that we assume constant acceleration, constant angular acceleration while the washer is starting and stopping. So that's a key idea here. Remember that we did this uh, constant acceleration with translational motion along the x-axis here, right, for a line. We've got analogous variables for each of the angular quantities, displacement, initial velocity, final velocity, acceleration, and time, and we can use the exact same method as before. In fact, uh, the equations that we have for angular motion with constant acceleration are exactly the same as the ones that we had for linear motion. We've just changed the new variables for the old. So uh, this is a two-step problem and we're going to go ahead and use constant acceleration each time. However, it does change in the middle so we need to do a two-part problem. Let me pause for a moment and write out our five variables for constant angular acceleration. So part one here is uh, where we are speeding up. And we have our five angular variables here. So we got the angular acceleration, the initial angular velocity, the final angular velocity, and the uh, angular displacement, and the time interval delta t. Now, uh, for this first part, we know that it starts from rest. So this is some key bit of information. Just as before, starting from rest means that the initial angular, angular velocity is zero. Uh, it reaches an angular speed of 10 pi radians per second. Now I don't know if this is going clockwise or counterclockwise, but I'm going to choose to say that the rotation, if we look at the washing machine, it's spinning counterclockwise as it speeds up, and so that's going to be a positive. I'll take that to be positive 10 pi radians per second. And we need one more bit of information. What's that going to be? We know what the time is, right? Eight seconds. We're trying to figure out uh, how many revolutions does the tub turn through. Revolutions is related to the angle it spins through, so we want to know what that angle is. Let's see if we can find a, a uh, equation. Now we're going to look for one that does not have acceleration, the angular acceleration, because we don't know what that is. Uh, the one without angular acceleration, it looks like that is the second equation here. Let's go ahead and write that down. So, delta theta equals one half omega initial plus omega final times delta t. And we know that the initial angular velocity is zero. Simplifies our equation a little bit delta theta is equal to omega final times delta t divided by 2. And let's put our numbers in and solve for delta theta. So omega final is 10 pi rads per second. Uh, and that's going to be multiplied by 8 seconds. And we're going to divide by 2. And this one we can do in our head here. This comes out to, we cancel our seconds out, and we are left with 40 pi radians. All right, for the second part, we're going to do the uh, same process here for part two. Now we're slowing down because we uh, stopped the drying dryer because we need to uh, go ahead and uh, grab a sock. All right, same thing, it's still constant acceleration, so we're going to have the same five. And since this happens immediately after part one, the final values for part one, such as omega final, that becomes the initial value for part two. So we start with 10 pi radians per second, and now we're going to go for 20 seconds until it comes to rest. Oh, that was not right. 
12 seconds until it comes to rest, right? So we have a time for the second part of 12 seconds, and it's going to come to rest, so our final angular velocity is zero. And now we're still trying to get the total revolutions it passes through. We want to know what the total angular displacement is. So for this part two, we're going to also calculate delta theta, and that means we'll use the same equations before. In this case, delta theta is going to be one half omega initial plus omega final times delta t. And uh, in this case, it is the final angular velocity that is zero, which simplifies our equation a little bit. And so we get omega initial delta t divided by two. And we're going to plug in our numbers again. So our initial is 10 pi radians per second. Our final time is 12 seconds, and we're dividing by two. And that one again, we can do in our head. We cancel out the seconds. We're gonna end up with radians of angle, and that's going to be 60 pi radians. Now, in order to solve the question for part A, how many revolutions does the tub turn through in the entire 20 second interval? Well, the uh, delta theta total here it's going to be the sum for part one and part two. So we've got 40 pi radians plus 60 pi radians, which is going to give us a total angular displacement here for the 20 second interval of 100 pi radians. Now we want to convert that for part A into how many complete revolutions? Well, that's a unit conversion. So we're going to start with 100 and pi. 100 pi radians, and we know that uh, for each revolution that you pass through 2 pi radians of angle. And if we calculate that, we'll end up getting a value. And that comes to, well, we can do this one by hand. See the pi's and the radians cancel, and we are going to divide 100 by 2. We're going to get 50 complete revolutions there of the, uh, spin, the dryer. Part B asks us, what is the total distance traveled by a sock stuck to the edge of the washer? So in this case, what we're looking at here, we're going to go ahead and kind of look at this washer as it rotates. And uh, it's going to go around, right, a certain 50 times, right? What's the total length around the perimeter if you go 50 times around? Well we have to use the uh, relationship, the tangential quantity arc length around the perimeter related to the angle through the radius r. In this case, the radius is given here, 0 0.5 meters. And so uh, the arc length s, it is uh, simply related to the uh, angle rotated. You multiply the radius r times the angle you've passed through. and so. This is going to give us a value for the total path traveled around the distance in 50 spins. That's going to be 0 0.5 meters multiplied by, which do we use? We have to use radians, right? We're taking a radius, we're going to multiply by radians. So it's going to be 100 pi radians. And uh, we're going to get an answer. When we multiply that out, it comes out to about 100 and 57 meters along the perimeter of arc length. And uh, as soon as we multiply the unit radian here by meters, we can go ahead and get rid of the radian. It's a dimensionless unit. And so we're going to be left with uh, the total distance traveled by the sock that's stuck at the edge is 157 meters around the edge. So those are our two answers for part A and part B.